don't even know what this star is. <laughs> So this is a very special episode again as we have another guest with us. This is Simon and he is a burn victim and he's been kind enough to answer some questions for us. Yes, that's right, Molly. <laughs> um, so exactly how long have you been suffering from burn injuries? Well, I've been suffering it from 1977 when I first got burnt and I've been living with it for 39 years. It's a long time. It is a long time. I never in the wildest dreams would have thought that burns could last for so long and cause that much pain for so long. Um, and when of course I met you, I realised like wow, this like they really can. Like I just thought they go through it for a couple of years and then it heals and all's well. So it's quite uh, an eye opener speaking to you about it. It's an eye opener on for things or burns can heal like first degree burns that's nothing second degree you get the burn there blisters it heals but with third degree burns you've got eyes it's more deeper into the skin yeah it hits all your nervous system your walking ability I know that, but at the end of the day, it's harder for getting it healed from infection. That's your main worry after when you get the treatment, you could have a setback, skin gaff might not work with infection, then you've got to go all the way back through the same operation again, and, you, and you're thinking you're a wee baby. At three, four, five year old, you don't understand what the hospital's doing to you. Then when you approach ten, you just start to get on that edge to realise, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, it's hurting me. I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to sit back and carry on with your childhood. But at the end of the day, your childhood's not there. Your childhood is basically tucked at the window and you think to yourself, have you got a family? Like you've got your sisters, you've got your mum, you've got your dad. You don't see them because she's in the hospital for either a week, a month, a year and you don't realise you don't have a family but you know your family is still there. That's the next hardest part mm -hmm. of it. And you think to yourself, who is your family? Is it your birth parents? Is it your siblings? Or is it the nursing staff and the doctors? In my experience, being a bun victim, I didn't have family. I only had knew the nursing staff, I knew the doctors, I didn't know my family so much. And that's what hurts no that's fine that's what hurts the most deep down if you're trying to explain to folk oh but it's all in your head you have got a mum and dad and when you're trying to say to them but you don't you don't have a family only family I know is the hospital that's my home I don't have a proper home for a bun victim living with this it's hard you got to block everything you got to keep your wits about you you got to keep yourself going don't let yourself go if you get in mental health status it's hard to get out of mm -hmm. really hard especially for 39 years and trying to think on your mental health, seeing the physical side, you know, living with the bunch, it's there, it, you see seen it day in and day out, and you think to yourself, why me? Why this happened? And that's the hardest part, 
plus as well when your family does say to you, oh, it's electrical fault, is it matches? And you're thinking between the two, what one is it? What is the proper story? Your mum tells you, oh, suddenly you got burnt by electrical fault and you feel my dad, feel, oh, it's a match. And you get your half sister, what, six year old? at the time, and my other sister was three at the time, and your half sister comes up to you and she's old enough and she speaks to you, or oh, I burnt you and you're like, oh, what? And your emotions just sit and trying to weigh up in your mind what, what happens. And you're thinking, this can't be happening. What's going on here? You're getting mixed wires in your brain, and you're sitting in your mental status. You think to yourself, "Oh, I wish you were dead." You're getting too much halo around you. I know that. Yeah, I hold my hands up. Yeah, I have died three times. Where they got burnt, and I'm lucky here. I thank the hospital for that, DRI hospital and all the staff, Perth, Royal Infirmary, Bridge of Fern and Scafro, keeping me on this planet, brought me back and I am grateful. I'm here speaking about it. I'm not another victim who passed away and it's hard to try and move on. But when you do move on, you're thinking to yourself, oh, you've taken that step forward, then you hit the barrier again, and other folks say, oh, what happened, what happened, what happened? And you're like, what's your fault to you? If you know what I mean, then it's, it's just like, get on with life. Mm -hmm. and that's... See, that's something I want to point out. Um, like I've said in previous videos, um, even if it's not a condition that, you know, the kind of condition you're born with kind of thing. You, it's not really not a good thing to be like, well tell me what happened, or tell me what happened, you know, it's it's not nice. Because if like, it's fine enough to be like, oh can I ask what happened and leave it at that, but I mean as you're saying there, it sounds like quite a few people have been like, oh what happened, what happened, like almost like, it feels almost like someone's asking for gossip. Um, it's not much. Gossip, Holly, it's more like they want to understand, but when you do get into it and tell them what really happened, they're thinking, I right, have you got the physical scarring there? And when you say, yeah, I have got the physical scar, I've got scars on my hand, my torso, above the groin, and both legs, and lost four toes. So when you do see that to folk and they go, hey, but you're still walking, you're still, you're not disabled. But in my eyes, I am disabled, but in other folks' eyes, you're like, no, you're not. And it's hard trying to show them, yeah, you are disabled. You got this barrier, there's no work out there. What's going to take on a person what's got bad buns, what suffers with leg ulcers, plus infection? What employee is going to employ you with bad infections? Oh, sorry, boss, I need to go away to get my dressing changed. Give me about an hour. No one plough's going to touch you for that. And it's hard for me sitting back, twitting my thumbs, wanting to do stuff, and you can't do it. That's the hardest part. It's you can do something and you're taking 10 steps back. I'm trying to explain to folk about that. It's not easy. I think a lot of that it seems to yeah come from the understanding like even me like 
I try and do my best to know as much as I can about different conditions and injuries and stuff and even I didn't realise that, you know, you can live for years with this kind of injury. And I think a lot of this, this thank you for doing this video because hopefully this will help, help people understand, help you guys understand that, you know, it is something you've got to deal a lot with and there's a lot of trauma and a lot of things to deal with. I keep on saying this to folk, it's hard for me to sit and speak about it and when you do go to counsellors or stuff like that from the health confession they keep on saying oh it's all in your head you imagine it but you're not imagining it because you've got the physical scars there and half the time you get nightmares, you get, it really freaks you out and you're thinking to yourself, how can you cope living over 39 years thinking, oh when's the next fire? What's going to happen to you? Is it going to be, are you going to look in the paper or hear on the TV as a young child? Same age. As me, what was 18 months old, enough to, and you come across that and read it in the paper, and that baby's passed away. You're thinking to yourself, that that was me. I was in the same boat. That family is grieving day in, day out. There's nobody in Angus and this area to go and speak to you've got to travel to Edinburgh, Glasgow and that's one of the places where you can actually go and speak to a proper counsellor who's got burns and in my eyes what I'm trying to do to f with folk around this area yeah I'm on Facebook, I've got a burnt victim page Linked in the description below. Yeah. And if anybody is going to contact me on it after they've seen this, they can do. You can contact Holly. Doesn't matter what way you do it. And I want to start up like to be like a one to one counsellor for once up in this area, if I can. And help families what went through this, let them understand they can get over it. Don't bottle it up. If you bottle it up even further, you're going to end up either hurting yourself, you won't care about anybody else by yourself, your family or loved ones out there is going to disown you. That's one thing you don't, do not want. I didn't have my family there for my backing. I had to learn on my feet how to get over this when I was 16 year old, making my own decisions, making my own mind up what I want. Not your parent saying, oh, you can't do this. Um, literally wrapping you up in a pillow. You're claustrophobic. Oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't go out, you've got to stay home 24 7. Don't believe me, do not sit in the house 24 7 because it's the worst thing you can do in your life. I've did it, I've been there, and in the last two years, I try. I have tried to suicide, I've done everything possible to do myself in and it is hard but in an in all aspects you've got to think why just sit back stop think what are you doing god put you on this planet god saved me from the burns he brought me back after dying three times why that's the question. Why did God save me? Is it because he just want me to be alive? He doesn't want me to go? 
over to the other side. Put me on this planet for a reason. What is that reason? Is it the reason for my life? I'm telling my tale to the public, to the world. That's the way I look on it. 1999. I was meant to get away to the operation done saying, oh yeah, D and amputee. And they went ahead and done muscle transplant. Not the operation I asked for. Whatever you do, make sure you read the consent form before you sign it. If you don't read it carefully, then it's from your head, be it other folk out there. It's in similar situations. I hope when you see this, don't be ashamed, don't be scared. What's happened, it's happened. Live with it. You still carry on in your life. I got a wife, got two kids, two stepdaughters as well, and it's great. You got a life. You just don't think you're sitting back in your brain, saying to yourself, "Oh, you don't have a life," but you do. It's your life. It's what you want. Not what anybody else wants, deep down. Thank you so, so much for doing this video for us. Is there anything else you'd like to point out? Something you feel I've missed? You've kind of taken the video from me, which is handy because I get to sit and don't do much. But it's all down to you. And I will stay. Look at me, I'm alive, it's my doing, my body, my life, not my wife's, not the hospitals, not my parents, it's my own body, I'm here, I'm alive, and I'm telling you out right there, buck up, be a man, or a woman, and take head of this true, true story. I'm left with 39 years, I'm 41 now, and I'm proud to be on this planet as a front of it. You know what, I'm going to scrap my outro because that was the best one we've had. Like I say, thank you so, okay. so much for doing this. So guys, like we mentioned, Simon has his own Facebook group and you can contact him and like that page. The details, the link is in the description below. Um, that will be there for you guys and you can head over there and say hi. Yep. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's helped. Um, hit that like button if you did, hit subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you in the next video. New videos every Wednesday. Bye-bye.